the UK's inflation rate surged to a five-year high in September as rising food and transport costs upped the financial pressure on struggling households while Brexit uncertainty caused the sterling to slide. Figures from the Office for National Statistics on on Tuesday showed the Consumer Price Index CPI measure of inflation rose to 3% last month, up from 2.9% in August. The increase was in line with expectations but it matches the level of April 2012. It was last higher in March that year when it reached 3.5%. Inflation will peak in next couple of months. Bank of England Governor Mark Carney tells it Commons Treasury https tco 8 i 5 ma 6 suit poopickttwittercoms 8 c 6 xiv BBC News UK at BBC News October 17, 2017 Households have been feeling the pinch as the Brexit pound bumps up everyday prices and wage growth tracks behind inflation. What is behind the rise on's head of inflation Mike Prestwood said food prices and a range of transport costs helped push up inflation in September. These effects were partly offset by clothing prices that rose less strongly than this time last year. The fall in the pound since last year's Brexit vote has also impacted inflation, rises in food and drink will hit poorer households hardest, while richer consumers continue to feel the effect of rising transport costs. Pick.twitter.com 07 Ip Kanyo, Resolution Foundation at Res Foundation October 17, 2017 Carney says the sole reason for increasing inflation is the depreciation of sterling. Owen Bennett at Owen Bennett October 17, 2017 Inflation has increased to 3%, the highest of any major EU economy. It's time for Gov to put single market back on negotiating table. PLSRT Pick.twitter.com 372G3 Uitru, Open Britain at Open. Britain October 17, 2017 The jump in CPI leaves Bank of England Governor Mark Carney on the brink of having to write a letter to Chancellor Philip Hammond explaining why inflation is rising so rapidly, the press association suggested, speaking in Westminster after the announcement Carney it was more likely than not that he would be writing to the Chancellor. The government has set an inflation target of 2%, with protocol dictating that Carney must contact the Chancellor if inflation exceeds 3% or falls short of 1%. Bloomberg via Getty Images Bank of England Governor Mark Carney has said it is more likely than not that he will write to Chancellor Philip Hammond focusing on CPI. The Office for National Statistics said food and non-alcoholic drinks rose by 0.8% month-on-month in September after falling by 0.1% over the same period last year. On an annual basis, prices rose by 3% last month, its highest level since October 2013 when it climbed by 3.9%. Transport costs also put upward pressure on the headline rate in September after recording a smaller month-on-month -month fall of 1.3% in contrast to a drop of 2.3% in 2016. Fuel prices also pushed higher, with petrol and diesel both stepping up by 2.5p on the month to 118.2p and 120.1p respectively. The Consumer Price Index, including owner-occupiers housing costs CPIH, was 2.8% in September, up from 2.7% in August. CPIH is the ONS's preferred measure of inflation, which includes costs associated with living in, maintaining and owning a home. Winners' pensioners can look forward to a 3% increase in the basic state pension next April their largest increase for six years. Under the triple lock system, pensions rise in line with earnings growth, September CPI reading, or by 2.5%, whichever number is biggest. Those on the new state pension, the BBC said, would see their weekly income rise to £164. At the moment, the full new state pension is £159.55 per week, 3% rise in SEP inflation will mean pensions rising next year faster than wages or benefits, widening gap in intergenerational fortunes, Darshini David at Darshina David October 17, 2017 Losers everyone else workers The rise in inflation means British workers are continuing to be hit in the pocket with average wages only rising by 2.1% per year in the three months to July, with UK inflation hitting a five-year high of 3%, real wages continue to be squeezed. Nothing to suggest this is going to change anytime soon. Pick.twitter.com G9SL35GFV, Jamie McGeever at Reuters Jamie October 17, 2017 Although the devaluation of sterling is expected to work its way through consumer prices soon today's figures mean the pay squeeze continues. Pick.twitter.com or GoZXQSXP, Resolution Foundation at Res Foundation October 17, 2017 The TUC, which represents millions of British workers, on Tuesday urged the government to act to stop UK households from hurting and reiterated its desire for the public sector. Action pay cap to be ditched, TUC General Secretary Francis Agrati told The Guardian the government needs to face up to Britain's cost-of-living crisis. 
The squeeze on household budgets is getting tighter by the month. The Resolution Foundation said today's figures mean that the pay freeze is currently biting hardest for those in the public sector, with increases in pay capped at 1%. Today's figures mean that the pay squeeze is currently biting hardest for those in the public sector picked out Twitter.com B22 SNIL, Resolution Foundation at Res Foundation October 17, 2017 Agrati said Chancellor Philip Hammond must use next month's budget to ease pressure on struggling families, that means giving 5 million public sector workers the pay rise they have earned. Prices are skyrocketing. Offering hardworking public servants spell of inflation increases would amount to yet another real terms pay cut. Homeowners The increase in inflation is expected to lead to an increase in interest rates meaning the cost of mortgages will increase coming next rising interest rates to tackle higher inflation. Your mortgage will go up and so will your borrowing costs. Because of Brexit HTTPS Cox 7 Schiffer, Joe Mom QC at Jolly Mom October 17, 2017 Agrati urged the Bank of England not to raise interest rates from the current low of 2.25% arguing that the British economy is simply not strong enough to cope, she said it would be a big mistake to increase interest rates before wages. Beneficiaries like workers' wages, benefits are not keeping pace with inflation, meaning the poorest Brits will find it even harder to get by next year even if they are in work. The Resolution Foundation said that low-income working families with two kids will lose more than £300 pounds next April. Other reports suggested beneficiaries could lose £450 pounds, if higher than expected inflation means four-year freeze on working age benefits and tax credits has cost 10 meters families £450 pounds a year not £320 pounds. picked out Twitter.com Fkib Foruj, Faisal Islam at Face Alice Alm October 17, 2017 Benefit claimants will lose £450 pounds by 2020 as a result of inflation inflation hitting 3% at same time as benefit freeze say at thieves. Norman Smith at BBC Norman's October 17, 2017 rising inflation means low-income working families with two kids will lose £315 from the benefit freeze next April picked out twitter.com o parkaknet 5a resolution foundation at res foundation October 17, 2017 CPI H at 2.8% and CPI 3%. Benefits are upgraded on today's figures so the freeze to work engage benefits means households will be 3% worse off picked out twitter.com gum 3 kapuba resolution foundation at res foundation october 17 2017 who's affected by the working age benefit freeze 7.3 million children 800,000 people looking for work and 2.4 million disabled people pick.twitter.com e40rf9lqgr resolution foundation at res foundation october 17 2017 small businesses the retail price index rpi which is used to set next year's business rates was unchanged last month at 3.9 percent despite coming in shy of expectations the rate still ensures businesses face a hefty tax hike in 2018 on top of the 23.9 billion pounds the government is expected to haul in from english firms this year the Federation of Small Businesses said the rate follows six months of business rate misery. FSB's national chairman details that misery to the Guardian since April's bruising revaluation, we've had the staircase tax, introduction of an unworkable appeals platform and chronic delays to the Chancellor's £435 million relief package. A near 4% bill increase next April, on top of losing year one transitional caps, will be the last straw for many.